Jeff Chandler for the events calendar. And today we're going to take a look at how to create events in the WordPress Classic Editor. We'll briefly take a look at the Black Editor at the end of this video. Once you've installed and activated the events calendar, you're going to want to create some events. This is actually pretty easy. Let's start in the WordPress dashboard. You should be able to find a menu entry called Events. And if you click on it, you should see the Add New link. So as you can see, we have Events. We'll click on this. Then if you hover over it, we'll or it'll load the page, click on the add new button, and there you have it. The event editor hopefully doesn't contain too many surprises. It is intentionally almost identical, at least at first glance, to the regular page and post editor used by WordPress itself. Just as with a page or a post, you can add a title and description to your event. The expected controls for saving it as a draft or publishing it are present as well. So if you're familiar with WordPress, you should feel right at home. Of course, events have specific bits of information associated with them that most pages and posts don't require. Start and end dates, for instance, not to mention venues and organizers. Fields to set all of these things can be found below the description editor in an area called the events meta box. So as you can see on this page, we have the event description area. And below this, we have a meta box called the events calendar. And we're gonna go over some of these settings right now. Now the start end date, this is simply when the event starts and finishes. Clicking into either date field will pop up a date picker, as you can see here. You can select your desired dates from the calendar, and there's also a dropdown. If you already checked the all day event box, you will not be able to specify a time for your event. The all day event checkbox, which you can see here underneath the date picker, is useful when the event is taking place on a particular date or dates, but you don't really know when, or else feel that it is good enough to say it takes place all day without being more specific. We've covered creating a singular non-recurrent event, but if you need help creating a pro-recurrent event, you'll want to read through our walkthrough tutorial, which you can find a link to in the description on the Events Calendar knowledge base. If this is your first time using the Events Calendar, you'll see this list of fields for creating your first event venue. If you've created a venue for a previous event, you'll have the option of selecting an existing venue from a drop-down menu, as you can see here. Entering a new venue name and selecting the Create option from the menu options will display the new venue form fields below, allowing you to create a new venue for your event. So if we type in here, New Venue, you'll see below there's a link here to create a new venue. If we click on that, you'll see the fields pop up so you could fill out information for your venue. Now it's also worth noting that you don't need to create or use a venue. Once you create a venue, you can provide a name for the venue and any optional address details, such as a contact phone number and website. The last two checkboxes control whether a map should be shown to visitors and or a link to a map should be displayed. If your event is happening a little off the beaten path and there isn't a mappable address, you can use latitude and longitude instead. To do this, leave the venue without an address. So we'll clear this out right here and then save, we'll update the event. And what we're going to do is we're going to go here to the left side, click on Venues. Click on New Venue that I created, it has no address attached to it. Down below, you'll see an option here, Use Latitude and Longitude. And if you check mark that box, you can add in the coordinates here. Once you're happy with the Events Venue, you can then edit the organizer details. Similar to the Venue details, you can also select any pre-existing organizer details that you have already entered. Also, just as with the venue details, this area is completely optional. So if you take a look here, we have organizers. You can click from a drop-down list here, select any of those that are added, or you can simply type in the name of an organizer, create them here in the box, and then add in their details. Keep in mind that if you opt for multiple organizers, any organizer meta, like the phone number or email, will not show on the front end only the organizers' names will be listed. If you have Events Calendar Pro, the listed names will link to the associated organizer page. The next section in the new event admin lets you again, optionally, provide an event website, as you can see right here. This is particularly useful if you are showcasing events organized by external organizations and they have a dedicated event website. Once again, you could pass on by and leave these alone if you like. If you don't provide a cost, then no cost details will be shown to visitors. If the event is actually free, then simply provide a cost of zero. And do also note that in the interest of being as internationally friendly as possible, you are able to make a currency symbol display either before or after the actual amount. 
So as you can see in the event cost area, we could just put, we could use the dollar sign for USD. There's an option here for before or after cost. And if we want the event to be free, we just enter zero and there you go. Depending on what is installed within your WordPress site, you may see additional fields and settings in this area, particularly if you have purchased and activated one of our awesome ticketing plugins. But the above fields constitute the basic settings used to define an event. If event tickets or Eventbrite tickets is installed and active, it will hide the event calendar's default event cost field on the WP Admin Add Edit event page in the Community Events Add Edit event form if activated. For our premium plugins, please refer to our extension Display the Event Cost field when ticket plugins are installed to reveal the Event Cost field. For Event Tickets RSVP tickets, please check the video description for a link that contains code you can add to your childthemesfunctions.php file. Now don't leave just yet, there's still a lot more to explore. Just like regular WordPress posts, you can tag events. These tags are in fact the very same tags used by WordPress itself. On the right hand side, you'll see a tags meta box. This is a really useful feature. Let's say you have some blog posts about the laws of physics and are also promoting a group of events, lectures, perhaps about the same thing. You could tag both with a suitable term like physics and help visitors to the website find not only physics related posts, but events as well. Besides tags, you can also categorize events and that's shown down below here in this meta box. Now it's worth emphasizing though that these are not the same family of categories as used in post. They definitely have a very similar, in fact, identical user interface to regular post categories, but they are in fact a distinct family of categories. In other words, if you happen to have an existing category you use for blog post, you should not expect it to appear in the list of event categories. And if it does, well, it just happens to share the same name, but it isn't actually the same. Usually found close to the tag and event category meta boxes, you can find the event options. As you can see on my screen, it's right here below event categories and above series. Now let's go over the event options box. Sometimes you want to be able to link to an event post by email or directly via a menu, but would prefer it isn't included in the main event views. Checking the hide from event listings box accomplishes just that. You might also happen to have a whole load of events taking place on the same day and naturally that can cause some problems in month view. And so at least by default, no more than three events per day are shown in that view. Selecting sticky in month view helps to ensure that this event is one of the ones that do show. The question marks help text reads, when events are in sticky month view, they'll display first in the list of events shown within a given day block. And last, we have feature event. The feature event option allows you to designate your most important events for extra emphasis on your pages. Featured events will be highlighted in event views, archives, and widgets, making it a great choice for special engagements that you like to have front and center. Usually found in the right sidebar directly under event options, well, in this case, it's series, but are the event status options. You can select from a myriad of different options here, and we're gonna cover those. First is scheduled, and this will list if the event is scheduled. Then we have canceled. We'll display the word canceled at the top of your event page, where you can also opt to include a reason if you prefer. Then we have postponed, which displays a postpone label on your event, and it can, you can include a reason if you'd like. Now what we've covered so far is the WordPress Classic Editor, and here's a brief overview of what creating events look like in the WordPress Block Editor. Here we can see an event in the WordPress Block Editor. If we click inline, for example, on July 11th, you'll see that you'll be able to pick the date inline. There are also options that show up for the block over here on the right hand side. And if we click down, you'll see an area where you can add the maps and the options to show those maps or over here where you can embed them, you can, uh, you can show the Google Map link. There's also areas down here for details where you can mention if it's an all day event, you could show the symbol before or after. So as you can see, you have the same options as before, but you can edit them right here in the WordPress block editor. And which one you use is up to you. We support them both. So that covers most of the extra fields and settings added for events. If you use other events plugins, including Events Calendar Pro, it's quite likely you will see additional items. But so long as you are familiar with all or most of the above, you should have no problems creating events whenever you want. Of course, if you hit any difficulties, please don't hesitate to reach out to the team over at our help desk. Good luck.